Hi, this is your host Sapin Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us once again, Lucas Gentley, co-founder and CEO of Loft Lab. Lucas, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for, for inviting me over again. We have been talking about V cluster for quite some time. And last time we also talked about the adoption and the interest that is growing. And if I'm not wrong, that uh, V cluster now also supports EKS. So if you can tell, you know, first of all, what does it mean for not only VK cluster community, but also EKS community? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, EKS is uh, making a lot of uh, progress with their EKS uh, anywhere. Uh, product to essentially, you know, ex extend EKS beyond the pure use case of, uh, you know, spinning up a cluster on top of AWS, but rather also, you know, running it on the edge, running it in your private data center and hybrid scenarios. And, you know, having EKS as a standalone distribution that doesn't necessarily rely on, uh, you know, all the AWS kind of hardwired uh, cloud constructs that are in place. Um, allows us to spin up uh, virtual clusters with EKS now. Um, so you can, you know, it was always possible to run V cluster uh, based on K3S on top of an EKS cluster. Um, but now it's also possible to, you know, have an on-prem cluster that may run with a completely different distribution and then, you know, spin up a virtual cluster that now runs with EKS. Um, that's a that's a really interesting uh, you know interesting uh, possibility that opens up there. So can you also talk about uh, where did the idea for adding support for EKS uh, with Vcluster came from? Who is doing the heavy lifting there? How is uh, Loft Lab involved? Yeah, that is actually a really good question because uh, it wasn't that our team you know just went out and <laughs> added EKS support. Um, it was actually the other way around. Uh, you know. Uh, Rich and I were uh, participating on uh, containers uh, on the couch, uh, it's an AWS uh, stream on YouTube, and the EKS folks got really excited about uh, vCluster, I guess, and you know we were chatting about extending support uh, in vCluster for vanilla Kubernetes. At that point, we only had uh, K3S um, as an option, and then we were working on making K0S work from Marantis. Um, and, you know, the EKS folks just uh, took it away and contributed uh, EKS as another distribution uh, in vCluster. Um, that was really great to see that, you know, this was possible within a matter of days. Uh, so I think we laid some some good groundwork for, you know, other companies to contribute to uh, vCluster and bring in their own distros, their own flavors of vCluster. Um, and that's a, that's a good thing for the community because, you know, it opens up possibilities for, for collaboration and really make the cluster a, a more essential part of the stack. And if I'm not wrong, it would be just the way I look at things. I think the best or the most successful open source projects are those where you see a lot of work done by the community folks, you know, who are really interested in the project. So instead of forking a project to meet their own need or the company doing all the work, if the community comes and contribute, I think that does show the potential of a successful open source project. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the biggest parts of, you know, Kubernetes success is that Kubernetes doesn't try to do everything. A lot of the things that Kubernetes does are actually pushing things out of the core and creating APIs for other people to implement, you know, solutions that fulfill a specific purpose. Um, you know, a good example for this is uh, the storage interface in Kubernetes. There's like probably 50 Kubernetes companies, you know, in the CNCF ecosystem that focus on storage solutions. All of them have their own, you know, drivers for Kubernetes. Uh, the cloud providers have their own, you know, there's like a different storage driver uh, for S3 buckets in AWS and then for buckets in Google Cloud, you know. Um, Kubernetes doesn't tell you, hey, you know, storage is covered by Kubernetes with this one solution or, or this two options, right? Instead, it says, here's an interface Everybody can implement that interface and, and make it work for, you know, uh, whatever works best for them and for their infrastructure. And I think that's a really powerful statement. You don't, you know, as, as the maintainer of an open source project, uh, it's good to open up uh, the project for, uh, you know, contributions. And the easier to make it for, for other collaborators to join another project, the, the better it is. We have been covering uh, 
B cluster on a regular basis whenever there is update we talk about it but what are the things that either you are excited about or you do see that's in the pipeline or future or what are the things that you would like to see yeah without spoiling too much here about <laughs> in a couple of weeks uh we do have something really exciting coming up that will open up an, a whole new area of uh you know, collaboration and, and use of vCluster within other products. Um, and that's that we're working on a cluster API provider for vCluster. Cluster API is this, you know, standardized way of spinning up and maintaining Kubernetes clusters has been really powerful. You know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the managed Kubernetes products like SUSE's Rancher, for example, um, have been rebasing on cluster API. Uh, you know, they had their homegrown solutions to spin up and manage and upgrade clusters. And now, uh, you know, they're using the standard interface, uh, which is a really, uh, you know, really interesting move across the board within the community to kind of standardize on cluster API. What we're doing um, with vCluster now uh, is working on a cluster API provider that means you can now use cluster API, uh, or I guess not now, but you'll be able to use cluster API in a couple of weeks uh, to also spin up virtual clusters and manage them just like any other Kubernetes cluster. Um, so although they run inside of another cluster, they behave like a regular cluster and you can spin them up, upgrade them, you know, add your stack to them, uh, everything that that cluster API provides as a functionality. I'm, I'm super excited about getting this shipped, but yeah, we'll have to wait another couple of weeks. It's still in the process of, of being finished. Lucas, thank you so much for talking to me today and of course talk about, I mean, I think this was something was already in the works, right? When we talk about, you know, the EKS folks, AWS folks should interest in it. So it was just a matter of time when the, this will uh, be added. So finally it happened. And I can see there are a lot of other things that will be coming into this project. So thanks for sharing those. And as usual, I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you. Absolutely. Look forward to hopefully seeing you at KubeCon soon.